Welcome everyone to another Thinkorswim tutorial where today we're going to be learning how to create conditional orders or advanced orders, whatever you want to call them, within Thinkorswim. Now for those of you watching who aren't super familiar with these, these are really just orders that trigger other orders or orders that cancel other orders. So as an example, one use case of that, if we were looking at American Airlines right here at 1452, let's just say I was looking at this stock and I really liked it, but I didn't want to buy it right now. Instead, I wanted to get it if it ever fell down to $14 even. Now, in this case, that's 50 cents lower than the current price. So that's probably not going to happen today, probably not tomorrow. Maybe it'll happen in a week from now or a month from now. But I don't want to just sit here and watch the stock all day, just waiting for that to actually happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach an order to that. And let's say I want to attach two orders to it. So I'm going to say, hey, if that ever happens, if that order ever fills and I'm actually able to buy American Airlines if it drops to 14, I then want to turn around and automatically try and sell it for a, let's say, 10% profit or stop myself out if it ever falls 5% because I don't want to lose too much money. So that right there would be a very simple example of an OCO bracket order or an advanced order. So essentially we're saying, first I want to buy the stock, and then if that ever happens, I want to automatically sell it for my profit or stop myself out if it ever hits my stop amount. Now there are a lot of other advance orders besides that, but that's going to be probably the most popular example. And again, that is going to be referred to as an OCO order or a one cancels the other. And within Thinkorswim, there are actually a few different ways to build those out. But the simplest way to do it is by first off pulling up the stock we want to trade. So in this case, I've got American Airlines pulled up. And if you look here at the very top of the screen where it shows the current price of American Airlines, we're simply going to click on that. And then down below in this little menu that appears, we could either say buy or sell, but then we'd have to manually add those additional conditions to it. So instead of doing that, what I want to do is come down here where it says buy custom. And within this little menu here on the right hand side, we can see three pre-made templates or three pre-made advance orders that Thinkorswim has made for us, as well as one that I've made for myself and saved to the platform. But backing up a second, we'll go over how to save these a little bit later on. If we come back up here above and we take a look at these three templates that Thinkorswim has made for us, we can see the very first one in the list, the one that says with OCO bracket, this is the exact one I was just talking about. So let's say we do in fact want to do that. So we're going to go ahead and click on with OCO bracket. You can then see down here at the very bottom of the screen, we can see those orders have been built out down here. And I know this looks a little bit weird, but if we just go one line at a time, the very first order in the list here, this is just our opening order. And we're going to fill this out just like normal. So right here, looking at the green line, we're saying we want to buy 100 shares of American Airlines at $14.54. But in my case, remember, I said I don't want to buy it at $14.54, the current price. I only want to buy it if it drops down to $14 even. And in this example, I'm okay with this order going out every single day until it fills. So I'm going to come over here where it says time in force day, and I'm going to flip that over to GTC. So now this opening order is going to be good until canceled. So it's going to go out every single day trying to buy American Airlines for $14 even. But if I look right below that opening order, I've got these two red lines, both of which are trying to sell my 100 shares if it ever hits either $15 or drops to $13. So this right here is where we can put in our profit target, which is going to be that limit order line, or our stop activation price. So the bottom line right here. Now, looking at it right here, we can see it defaults to a dollar above the current price or a dollar above what we're buying it for. And the stop defaults to a dollar below what we're buying it for. But we can make those anything we want. So if I wanted to have a $20 profit target on this guy, I could always throw in $20 here. And then if I wanted to stop myself out, if it ever fell below $10, we could always throw that in for the stop price. And then the only other thing I would need to do is change the time and force for these two as well, changing them to good till canceled. And now if we look at this thing again, what I'm first saying is I want to buy American Airlines if it ever drops to 14. Then if that ever happens, I want to automatically turn around and try and sell it for $20 a share or stop myself out if it falls below 10. But because these two sell orders are linked, remember they're an OCO order, one cancels the other, only one of them can ever fill. 
So I'm either going to sell it for 20 or I'm going to sell it for 10. And whichever one of these fills first, the other one is going to be canceled automatically. So now to see how that would look on our chart, if we go ahead and hit confirm and send over here, we're going to get a little confirmation, just making sure this is actually what we want to do. So we're again, buying 100 shares at 14, selling it at 20, or stopping out at 10. And since that all looks right, we'll come down below and hit send in the lower right hand corner. You can then see these orders are actually reflected directly on the chart itself. So right here is my opening order. And then I've got my profit taking order way up here. But remember, this is just waiting for the opening order to fill. So this order and this stop order down here below aren't actually going to do anything until we actually buy it. But let me take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is actually me. Over the past year, I built a trading journal called Trader Log, which was designed specifically for options traders. You can either upload your brokerage statements directly, and then those statements are automatically organized by spread type, or you can manually add the trades individually if you decide to. You can then quickly track your portfolio performance, analyze your returns by strategy, and in the end, hopefully make more informed trades moving forward. Also, it's not just for options. You can also use it to journal your stock, futures, Forex, and crypto trades. So go ahead and check it out using the link below and use the code TRADERLOG50 for 50% off. And besides seeing it on the chart, if we were to come over here to the monitor page in the upper left-hand corner, and then come down below and open up working orders down here, looking right up here at the top, we can see our opening order just like before, and then we can see it's linked to these two OCO orders right here. And then later on, if I ever wanted to cancel this or edit it, I could do it right from here by simply right clicking on the order I want to edit or cancel, and then hitting either cancel order to outright cancel it, or cancel slash replace to edit it in some way. Now for this example, we are just gonna cancel it. Don't actually wanna buy American Airlines right now, but that's one way we can create an advance order within Thinkorswim. And if we go back to the charts page for a second, we can take a look at another really simple example by coming back up here to the price at the top again. And then just like before, we're gonna come down below where it says buy custom. But this time we're gonna come over and click the button here that says with a stop. And you can see that as soon as we do this, it does look really similar to that previous order that we placed, except in this case, we only have one sell order. So looking here at the top line, we're again first saying that I want to buy 100 shares of American Airlines at 1454. But this time we're saying if this order fills, I only want to stop to go out there. So if it were to fall below 1354, get me out. I just want to cut my losses. But we could also adjust this if we needed to. So we could come over here where it says stop. We could click on that and change it to a limit order. And now instead of selling it at 1354, we want to put in our profit target at 20. So now we've got our opening order to buy it at 1454, which if that fills, this limit order is going to go out there to sell it if it ever goes up to $20 or higher. We can also put in percentage or dollar targets rather than putting in a specific amount if we wanted to. And the way we do that is by using this little linking icon over here on the right. So if we were to click on this, You'll actually see over here on the left, it actually defaults to a trigger amount right now, which in this case is actually what we want to use. And we're essentially saying whatever I buy it for. So in this case, if I buy it for $14.54, I want my limit order to go in. Let me widen this a little bit. $5.46 above that. So if we were to change this a little bit so I can use easy numbers as a reference point, if I was to say, if I ever buy this for 14, I want my limit order to go in $5 above whatever I buy it for. My limit order is going to go in at $19 a share. But I could also change it from a dollar amount, which is what this little plus or minus icon represents. And I could instead flip it over to a percentage amount. So now I'm instead saying if I buy it for 14, I want my profit taking order to go in 5% above whatever I buy it for. Now, just for example's sake, let's say that every time I buy a stock, I like to put in my profiting order 10% above that. So if this is going to be something that I do all the time, and let's actually change the time and force to GTC. So this profit taking order goes out every single day. But let's just say I do this all the time and I want to save this so I can quickly build it out anytime I need to in the future. 
So the way we save this template right here is by coming down to the little floppy disk icon in the lower right hand corner, which if we click on that, we're gonna see a big name in here, which is just a bunch of nonsense right now. I'm not gonna be able to remember what this thing does. So I'm gonna delete all of that out of there and I'm gonna give it a name I can actually remember. So I'm gonna name it 10% profit, something really simple and just hit save. And now with that saved, I can actually reuse that template on any stock or option or future that I want moving forward. So if we were to come up here above and flip this symbol over from American Airlines over to Apple, and just like before, if I wanted to buy Apple right now, I could come up here to the price at the top, just go ahead and click on that number. We're going to come back down below where it says buy custom. And then if we look over here on the right, we can see that template that we just made. So right here, we've got the 10% profit offset. And if we click on that, we can see it is pre-built exactly how we saved it previously, except now we're building out an order on Apple rather than American Airlines. So we can see right here at the top, we're buying 100 shares of Apple at 237.49. And then I'm saying, if that happens, if I buy those shares, I want to automatically sell them 10% higher than whatever I bought them for. So in this case, the only thing that we might need to edit is the price at which we're buying it for. Because let's say I don't want to buy it immediately. I only want to buy it if it drops down to 230 a share. And then remember, this limit offset, the profit taking order, is simply going to go in 10% above whatever I buy it for. But that's going to be one really simple way to create different types of advanced orders within here. But if you ever want to do this manually yourself and build out every part of the trade one step at a time, what we're instead going to do is let's go ahead and start over by just simply deleting whatever's in here. And let's go ahead and build out an order to simply say, I want to buy Apple if it ever drops to 230. And then I want to automatically put out a trailing stop that follows it by 5%. So what we're going to do in this case to build it out one leg at a time is come up here to the top price again, where it says Apple last traded for 237.33. But this time, instead of using one of our custom orders, we're actually going to come up above and hit buy. We can then see down here at the bottom of the screen, we have a really simple buy ticket down here to just outright buy 100 shares of Apple. And we could fill this out just like normal. So let's say I want to buy it if it ever goes down to 230. But now in order for us to add that closing order, the trailing stop to get us out if it falls too much, we need to actually come over here to the lower left-hand corner where it currently says advanced order, single order. And single order just means all I want to do is buy 100 shares. That's it. I don't want anything else to happen. I don't want any other orders canceled or activated. I just want to buy 100 shares of Apple. In our case, though, we want to click on that and instead look in this list. And I will say all of these are important to know. But if I'm being honest, the only two I see you actually using on a regular basis is either the first trigger sequence or the first triggers OCO. And just breaking that down one at a time, the one we actually want to use in this example is actually first trigger sequence. And that simply means that the first order is going to trigger the second order. The second order would trigger the third order. Third order would trigger the fourth order and so on. Now, in our case, we only have two orders, but I do want that first order to trigger the second order. So that's why we're using this one right here. And we're going to click on it. We can see that that didn't actually do anything because looking down here, I still only have an opening order to buy 100 shares of Apple. So to add the sale, we can do a couple different things. We could just come up here to the top and click on the price again and say sell. And that would actually add the order ticket down here below. Or we can do what I prefer to do. And that's just come down here to the order ticket itself and simply right click anywhere on the order line. Then within this little pop-up window, we can come down below where it says create opposite order, which is exactly what we want. We want to sell our 100 shares. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And now looking at the order tickets right up here, we can again see our opening order to buy the stock. And then once that fills, we've got our order to sell the stock. But looking here, we can see it defaults to a limit order. So we do need to make some changes to that. We need to change this over from a limit to a trailing stop. And we also need to change the offset amount right down here. Because at the moment, it's trailing it by 10 cents. And I believe I said I wanted this to be 5%. So we're going to go ahead and change this first off to a percentage amount. And then I can come over here and make it negative 5%. So I'm now saying follow the stock as it moves up. But if the stock ever falls by 5%, just cut my losses, get me out of this thing immediately.
Now, later on, if I changed my mind and I didn't just want to have a trailing stop on this thing, I instead wanted to have a trail to the downside, but also a profit taking order to the upside. What I could do is come down here to the advanced order button again and flip this over from a first trigger sequence to a first triggers OCO. And remember, that's the exact order we talked about at the beginning. So here I've got my opening order to buy it. I've got my stop to get me out if it goes down. And now in order to add the profit taking order, I'm again going to click on the green line or right click on the green line and then come down below and hit create opposite order once again. We can then see a limit order gets added down here. And just like before, it defaults to a limit with the current price or the price we've got set up here. But I'm instead going to base this off of a trigger amount. So I'm saying whatever I buy it for, I want my profit taking order to go in 10% above that. So now I've got a trailing stop 5% below, a profit taking order 10% above, and I would probably make both of these GTC. And now I've got my entire trade planned out. I've got the entry, I've got the exit, and I could theoretically sit back and watch this thing, and it's going to happen automatically. But again, these are just the basics to get you started with creating conditional or advanced orders within Thinkorswim. As you could see down here in this little advanced order window, Technically, there are a lot of different ways we could connect these orders or how we could activate other orders once other orders fill. But really, the two you're going to mainly lean on is going to be the first trigger sequence or the first triggers OCO. Definitely go out there and practice in paper money before you ever do these in your real account to make sure you really get the feel for it. And then once you're ready, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. I go much more in depth on a lot of the tools in here. And later on, I'm going to cover how to do all of this in the active trader tool. So that'll allow you to do everything we just did with one click. That'll be for more of you day traders or scalpers out there, the ones of you that want to go in and out insanely fast. We'll talk about that in a later video. But if you're interested in learning more now, go ahead and check out this next video here, and I'll catch you all there.